Once I flip this switch, the entire world is gonna be just as toxic as us, baby! Today, we are going to look at every feature available in the new Stellaris Toxoids DLC that is coming in just under 14 days. Damn the consequences. Stellaris Dev Diary 264 has dropped, and now I can bring to you all of the information available in that Dev Diary, which basically includes a full feature walkthrough. We are going to be looking at the new civics, the new traits, the new ascension perks, and one of the two new origins. So with absolutely no further ado, let's dive in and find out what's going on. Let's start with the new civics that we're going to be getting with Toxoids. Three new civics are coming, the first of which is Mutagenic Spars. If you love pop growth, then you're going to absolutely go wild or bananas for this new civic. There is a different version depending on whether or not you are a normal biological empire, a hive-minded empire, or a machine intelligence empire. The basic version for Normie Empires lets you build mutagenic spars. Each mutagenic spar grants you two bath attendant jobs, and you will get plus 1% pop growth speed per industrial district per bath attendant. So right at the start of the game, if you're a spiritualist empire and you start with three industrial districts, you'll be getting plus 6% pop growth speed due to the three industrial districts and two bath attendants on your planet. There are, however, some drawbacks. Every industrial district gives you minus 0.5% happiness and minus 0.5% habitability. That happiness and habitability will reduce your resource output from jobs and slightly reduce your pop growth speed as well. Though the net income from pop growth speed is still plus 0.75% per industrial district. And don't forget, right at the start of the game, your capital is actually higher than 100% habitability, so it will take quite a few industrial districts to get your habitability below 100%. If you are a hive mind, you're going to get the permutation pools. This is very, very similar, but instead of granting you additional pop growth speed, you're going to get plus 1.5% biological pop assembly speed, which is going to stack very nicely with your spawning pool and possibly if you have the budding trait as well. In exchange for this, you do get minus 0.75% habitability per industrial district because of course hive minds do not care about happiness, so there needs to be an increase to that penalty. This, I believe, is going to be a very, very strong civic for hive mind empires. Finally, machine intelligences get the hyper lubrication basin. This allows you to get plus 1% pop assembly speed at the cost of plus 1% amenities usage per industrial district. Like all of the others, you cannot have the life seeded origin. Now, this I believe is the weakest of the three because increasing amenities usage for drones per industrial district is going to be prohibitively expensive when it comes to pop efficiency. Relentless Industrialist is available to all regular biological empires and it has a Megacorp version as well. What does it actually do for us in the game though? So you're going to be able to build the Coordinated Fulfillment Center, significantly increasing alloy and consumer goods output at the cost of reduced pop growth and it will gradually turn the planet into a tomb world. From my gameplay at the weekend at PDXCon, I can tell you this is a building that comes in two levels. The first level will grant 20% extra metallurgist output and 20% consumer goods output which is quite high and very useful to stack at the cost of 20% pop growth and the tomb world will take about 30 years before it is migrated or transformed into that. This is absolutely perfect if you plan on pairing it with something like radiotrophic, something like that or Tomb World Habitability. This also represents the first and only way, uh, other than using um, concussive uh, terraforming methods on a planet, to transform a planet into a Tomb World. So this is fantastic for any of you that want to do RP or play with Tomb World species. It's also great if you wanted to RP as absolutely maniacal capitalists that will stop at no end to increase their economic output. Do I see a place for this in the meta at the moment? Yes, absolutely. I am very much hoping that it in fact makes Tomb World Start a viable start, given that you can basically go around and terraform planets into your preferred planet type Tomb Worlds at the cost of everyone else's habitability, and thus making your planet very unpalatable to any aliens that might want to take you over. And if you're enjoying this video, please relentlessly industrialize that like button. 
Scavengers is a very, very interesting new Civic that comes with some more information attached that we actually don't see here. So from my play at the weekend, I can tell you that the reason we have this, well, let's read the effect first and then you'll probably have a question. Effects. Researching debris will grant both research and a portion of other resource costs of the destroyed fleets. Ships can be salvaged for some debris. Well, what does this mean? Well, basically what is happening, there is now a policy in place in the game you'll be able to choose when you scavenge or research debris, whether you want research from that or whether you want other resources. Those resources might be alloys, they might even be an entire ship if you have this civic specifically. That will mean that if an enemy comes and attacks you, you could actually use it to grow your economy and possibly even use it to build more ships to throw back at that enemy making this quite an interesting uh, interesting little civic that they have added. And if you're in need of any of the other Stellaris DLC or you'd actually like to buy the base game itself, it is currently on sale from now until the 12th of September on Humble Bundle. You can get up to 75% off Stellaris and up to 50% off selected other DLC. And by following the affiliate link down below in the description, you can help to support this channel. There's also a new Ascension perk coming out, that is the Detox Ascension perk. And if you've ever wanted to live on a toxic world, or at least a planet that used to be toxic, this is now your chance. It will enable the terraforming of toxic planets into habitable worlds. This won't actually save all of the problems and all of the issues you had with the planet. There will still be some tile blockers on that previously toxic world that add negative modifiers like, as you can see here, minus 5% habitability, reduced amenities, obviously reduced districts because that's generally what blockers do, and that sort of thing. You will need to clear these additionally even after terraforming. On top of that, you won't be able to terraform every toxic planet. I can tell you that from having played uh, Stellaris Toxoids at PDXCon. You'll You'll only be able to do it with planets that have the, uh, the the modifier that shows that they are terraforming candidates. That means they'll basically be similar to Mars in the Sol system, which is a barren world, which is a terraforming candidate. If you find terraforming candidates, which are toxic worlds, and you take this ascension perk, you'll be able to eventually live on them. Before we get on to the new origin and everything Paradox has to tell us about that, we're going to first look at the new traits. We are looking at four new traits here. It's a little sneaky, there are even more traits actually added and some traits added with patch 3.5 as well. But what are you getting if you purchase Stellaris Toxoids? Well, the Incubators trait will grant between plus 30% pop growth and minus 10% pop growth speed inversely proportional to the number of the pops on the planet. And I can tell you from playing at the weekend that basically this minus 10% pop growth speed you'll get to that when you roughly get to the number of pops which are available on a capital starting world so around 28 to 30. So that 30% starts off at the beginning when you have basically one pop and scales down to minus 10% as your population grows and grows. This means you will have massive pop growth right at the beginning of your colony. You'll very quickly be able to get to 10 pops and upgrade the colony capital but after that you'll start seeing some reduced uh, efficiency here and eventually you will actually get a negative modifier to pop growth so you'll want to modify this out. This is going to be a perfect trait to take with the overtuned origin but I haven't quite got there yet and I'm definitely getting ahead of myself. Inorganic Breath is a modification to an already existing trait that is available to Lithoids. This one is going to cost you three points, not two like the Lithoid trait, but actually three points, so it's a little bit more expensive, or at least that was the cost at the weekend. Those numbers, I don't think they're actually final though, so we could see some changes. But this gives you plus 0.02 exotic gases per month for each pop with this trait. That is twice as many exotic gases as the Lithoid version, which only gives you 0.01. However, it does cost an extra trait point, and each pop gets plus 50% pop upkeep. Whilst that that's not massive, it is still something to think about. So I'm not entirely sure if I would really use this trait if it's worth exactly what we get from it. The roleplay potential here though is fantastic. Having disgusting breath which your economy, your state can use to better its own ends. So Noxious is basically the toxic trait, I'm saying this with little air quotes whether or not you can see them, but it's the toxic trait that's going to affect your pops. This is going to work somewhat like Subterranean and at the moment it's pegged at costing a single trait point. What does it do? 
where your species minimum habitability is 30%, but the species habitability cap is minus 30%. This should mean, in theory, that unless there happens to be a bug, this is how it works at the weekend at least, your pops will live on planets that have between 30% habitability and 70% habitability. So they will only have a 40% habitability window to move between, and they'll never have maximum habitability, so they'll always be getting some negative modifiers for living on planets. It also increases their army damage. There seems to say also a defense army strength as well. I assume that is the health. So defense army strength goes up as well as all army damage. That is okay. It's not amazing. It's not great, but it, it's fine to have that. Pop housing usage goes up 10%. That is going to reduce your logistic pop growth if you are a regular biological species or a hive mind species. And then we get into the really quite interesting part of this trait. Happiness per noxious pop minus 0.01. Now this toolkit is a little confusing. I have to give a massive thanks to Alfrey for sitting down next to me this weekend and explaining and going through with me exactly how this works in game. Alfrey is one of the devs and he was absolutely lovely. So what does this do? For every noxious pop on your planet, every non-noxious pop, so a pop without this trait, will suffer minus 0.01 happiness. The next part is that the happiness per non-noxious pop is increased by 0.02. What this means is for every noxious pop that exists on your planet, it will be gaining plus 0.02 happiness by the number multiplied by the number of non-noxious pops on the planet. So in order to maximize the noxious trait, you really need to put noxious pops next to non-noxious pops and see how much they absolutely hate it. The fourth trait shown off here is exotic metabolism. This is not something you get access to at the beginning of the game. You actually need to fully finish the genetic ascension in order to get it. It does require having a robust economy to support their upkeep. What does it do? Well, if you've completed your genetic ascendancy, your genetic ascension, you, for the cost of one trade point, will be getting plus 25% pop growth speed, plus 25% habitability, and plus 50 years leader lifespan. However, every pop will have plus 0.125 exotic gas upkeep. This means that you will reduce the number of pops available in your empire for working any particular type of job, if everyone has this trait, by between two and four and a half percent by my calculations, as you will need to go off and send those pops to work the exotic gas refinery jobs. So there is also a kind of a mineral cost to this as well. And that will reduce your total population count by around three to 5%, as I, as I just said. But don't forget, you're getting some massive bonuses here. 25% habitability, 25% pop growth, and 50 years leader lifespan, all for only a single point, which is absolutely astronomical. But what do you think about all of these new features coming with Stellaris Toxoids? Please let me know down in the comments below. For the first few hours after this video goes live, I will endeavor to read all of your comments and reply to as many as I can. We cannot, of course, forget about the fact this is indeed a species pack, so we will be getting some lovely new portraits. I've seen all of the new portraits and what they do. I can't yet show you that footage, so instead, let me show you from the Steam page what all of those portraits actually are. And some of them are very, very beautiful and very interesting. They all follow the toxic theme, which seems to be a mixture between kind of respirators, gas masks, toxicity, these weird growths on your body, and poisonous frogs or possibly venomous. I'm not actually sure which ones these are. I don't know whether they secrete the poison or they inject poison into you. That is one for you to decide. The final feature we're going to look at in today's video from Stellaris Toxoids, or at least about Stellaris Toxoids, is the Overtuned Origin, one of two new origins coming in Stellaris. The final origin I actually am not allowed to include in this video yet. I have seen it, but I have been sworn to silence, sworn to secrecy by Paradox themselves. I'm, I'm not technically under an NDA, but I have given my word and I am a man of my word, so I won't be spoiling anything. So we will look at Overtuned, and I also intend later on to release a video uh, showing off Overtuned from the uh, from Stellaris PDX Con and showing off what I think might be quite amazing, some of the things we can do with this, and some first thoughts. Today, right now, I'm simply going to be covering the details we've seen from the Stellaris livestream yesterday on Monday, as well as what is in this dev diary, which tells us about this origin. 
Overtuned is, to put it quite simply, the Genetic Ascension Rush Origin. This is the equivalent to Teachers of the Shroud, or somewhat less excitingly, Mechanist. What does it actually give us though? Well, we are going to be allowed to select overtuned traits. I'll go through those traits in a minute. There is a massive number of overtuned traits. Basically, each overtuned trait is very similar to an existing trait, but instead of costing us just trade points, it also costs 10 years of average leader lifespan. Thus, the more overtuned traits you have, the faster your leaders die. And I heard a very funny story about this. During testing, the uh, leaders were actually dying so quickly, dying so fast, that they ran out of leaders in the leader pool and had to make a fix to the game to make sure there were enough leaders if you select all of the overtune traits and your leaders die every day. Each of these overtune traits also only costs us a single point so they are very very cheap and you can double their effectiveness by using the damn the consequences edict which is very very powerful. If you have the overtuned origin, and only if you take this origin, you're then able to add and remove any overtuned traits through gene modding. Even though they are technically beneficial traits, you can remove them straight away at the start of the game. And when I say remove them at the start of the game, I really do mean the very start of the game, because you will start with the ability to genetically modify your pops because you will have that technology unlocked straight away. That means as soon as you have finished your second tradition, you can actually begin your genetic ascension, which is wildly, wildly powerful. If you go for some sort of unity rush build, I am very confident that could mean you can begin your path to genetic ascension as early as 10 or 15 years into the game. Now let's look at all of the amazing traits you can get your hands on if you go with Overtune. The first of which is Juiced Power. This is basically the equivalent of strong. It gives you plus 40% army damage and plus 5% worker pop resource output with minus 10 years leader lifespan. I think there is something of a graphical bug here. That's why it's doubling up saying army damage and combat damage. As far as I know from speaking to the devs, it does not give you 80% and it doesn't give you an extra 40% to weapons output on your ships or anything like that. As you're going to quickly see, these traits do generally tend to mirror more expensive regular traits, but as I said before, they are all only one point. Dedicated Miner is minus 10 years leader lifespan and plus 15% minerals from jobs. Technical Talent is basically the same, but plus 15% energy from jobs. And Farm Appendages is plus 15% food from jobs. I have missed out the very first trait, and that is Spliced Adaptability, plus 20% habitability and only minus 10 years leader lifespan. These could be really crazy if you combine them. I am currently thinking combining traits with something like Lithoids so that we can hopefully ignore this leader lifespan negative modifier might be very, very powerful indeed. Crafted Smiles gives you minus 10 years leader's lifespan and plus 15% amenities from jobs, so it is slightly worse than Charismatic. But don't fear, you're actually able to stack all of these overtuned traits along with the regular traits with no problem at all. So you can actually take Crafted Smiles along with Charismatic for a total amenities from jobs output of plus 25%. You can also do that with some of the intellectual and increases to research bonuses traits that were going to see in just a moment. Low maintenance on the surface I believe seems pretty weak. You get minus 10% pop consumer goods upkeep for minus 10 years leader lifespan. Augmented intelligence is equivalent to the intelligent trait and will stack with it. For minus 10 years lifespan and a single point, you'll get plus 10% to physics, society and engineering research, which is really, really powerful. Gene Mentorship gives you minus 10 years leader lifespan and plus 25% leader experience gain. That might come in very helpful as your leaders are living very short lives. Expressed Tradition is a bit of a weird one here. It is almost equivalent to the traditional uh, trait, which gives you plus 10% unity from jobs. They both cost one point, but this one gives you minus 10 years leader lifespan, which is pretty nasty. Yes, you can double this using the, uh, the edict you get with this origin, but I'm really not sure it's actually worth it. And now we get to the really, really good stuff. You actually get access to the three of the traits that are available usually only through genetic ascension. Well, there are overtuned versions that you can have right from the start of the game. 
elevated synapses is the equivalent of erudite, you get a whopping minus 30 years leader lifespan. It costs two trade points, so these are more expensive than the others, but in exchange you get plus two to your leader level cap, not like they'll ever live that long, and plus 20% physics, society, and engineering research. You can also stack this, and I've checked, with both the augmented intelligent and intelligence, so if you put all of those on a pop, you fire the edict off, you'll be getting a whopping 70% bonus to physics society and engineering research on those pops, which is simply mind-blowing given you can have that from as early as about year 5 or 6 in-game. Pre-planned growth is the overtuned version of fertile. This gives uh, the cost of two points and minus 30 years leader lifespan, plus 30% pop growth speed, which is so much for only two points, and minus 10% pop housing usage. If you're taking Overtuned, I can't see a world in which you probably don't want to get this on some of your pops to be getting ridiculous pop growth somewhere. You probably only want this on a few pops, and given you get gene modification technology right at the start, I'd probably recommend your early colonies uh, have this pre-planned growth there on that world as it should be a relatively cheap and simple task of doing a gene modification special project on those two initial colonies to give all of those pops pre-planned growth. Excessive endurance is the most expensive trait. This is pretty much the equivalent of robust, minus 30 years leader lifespan, and a whopping three points, not two, but three, for plus 30% habitability and plus 5% resources from jobs. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the balance on this last one, and don't forget all of these uh, from a balance perspective may change before the final release, which is now almost 14 days away. And apart from Knights of the Toxic God, which is a fantastic new origin, absolutely fantastic, those of you that are really wanting a story pack, you might be positively happy with that one. But that wraps up all of the features that are coming with the new Stellaris Toxoids. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to know what else is coming in the very near future, you can find out about the planned combat rebalance and the new ship class they are interested in introducing by clicking the video on screen now.